All right, people, this question here is from KG. KG, here you go, hun. It says a mutation occurred within a population of squirrels. So here we're looking at squirrels, all right? This population was then separated by a river. So the minute we see separated by a river, we're looking at a geographical barrier. Okay? Um, many years later, it is discovered that the original population had undergone speciation. Okay? The process of speciation is shown in the diagram. All right, before we even do anything, what is speciation? It is when you have one species that gets separated into two separate species. Every single time a pineapple, that is what happens. So they get separated into two species by a barrier, by, a, 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 like in this case, it is water. So it can be a river, it can be a, a lake, it can be the sea, it can be a mountain range. For whatever reason, the original population is split into two. And the same process applies. And people, you have to know this. They are going to ask it to you in some form or manner. They have to. It is central to evolution. It's central to speciation. It is what everything, it's, it's, it's basically everything you've learned in evolution. Okay. And remember, evolution is going to count 66 out of 150 marks. That is more than a third of paper two. So, what happens? You've got this geographical, uh, this ge geographical barrier. Okay. Now the one species has uh, uh, one population has now become two populations. Okay. They are separated. They are now in a different environment. They have different environmental pressures. Okay. And natural selection takes place. All right. And with the natural selection taking place, the the each um, population develops physically, so phenotypically, and genotypically in their genes, which is why they become physically different. They, they change. So they, be, because of natural selection and the different environments that they have, they, each, each population is going to develop genotypically in the genes and phenotypically, physically, so that they are different. They are different. So that if we remove the barrier or we take these animals and we put them, or the two populations, and we put them back together again after a period of time, they will not be able to mate and produce live, uh, uh, live offspring, uh, um, fertile offspring. So it's the same as we've discussed before when we've said you do get a horse mating with a, a donkey and producing a mule, okay? That's great. A mule is an amazingly strong animal. Okay, except that it has a bit of a temperament like a donkey, which is stubborn. But at the end of the day, you've got your mule. But the mule is infertile, so it cannot pass those genes on to the next generation. And that is what happens when we mess with, 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 with populations and species. They cannot interbreed. It's nature's way of making sure that things work on this planet. Okay, so what happens? When you bring those two populations together, they will not mate and produce fertile or, or reproduce and, and, and um, have fertile offspring. So what happens? They can't get back together. And that is your biggest proof whether a, a population is the same species or a different species. Will they reproduce and produce fertile offspring? If they, they can reproduce but they don't produce fertile offspring, they are different species. Always, every time a pineapple, you have to know those five points. And they are going to ask you. You have to learn it, okay? When I get back to my home today, I am going to type that up for you. I'm going to take a photo and I will post it for you on the, the Facebook page, okay? On the Mindset TV Facebook page. I want you to learn it off by heart. It's five points. You can learn entire songs and 500 different songs, you can learn five points for your exams because it will give you eight to 10 marks. All right, so let's get down to our question. So here we've got our little uh, um, squirrels and what happens? We've got a river 
and this river separates. So there's species A. That's our original species. Okay, our original species population. Now, they have a couple of mutations that take place here. And remember, mutations are, will cause variation. Now, we always have variation within a species anyway. Okay, if you look at us as human beings, I mean, look at all the variation between us. And in fact, if you look at the people that live in Africa, we have the most variation within our African uh, uh, um, people than anywhere else in the world, which tells you we are awesomely special. Okay, so now we've got the most variation. Then we have, here's this river. And this river is our geographical barrier. Now remember, these little squirrels, they're little bubbas, man, they're little. They, they can't get across this river. So the river divides this population. And we get a whole bunch that go this way and a whole bunch that go that way. Okay. But now look here. This is what happens. This, this mutation that they had, well, clearly on this side of the river, the mutation is good. Because... If you look at species B, they all have the mutation. And if you look on this side of the river, okay, well, here clearly the environment mutation was bad. Okay? So the guys that survived were those that didn't have the mutation. Can you see? They white. And these little guys on this side, they've got the mutation because, well, the, the, what they did was they used the mutation, they used the little black ones as, as the mutation. So there we go. Right, so now it says, first thing, define a population. Okay, a population is a group of individual organisms that belong, now listen, to the same species, that live in the same area, and that will interbreed and produce fertile offspring. That definition, you must know off by heart. Okay, so what is a population? It's individuals of different ages, like us humans, different ages, that live in the same area, same, 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 live in the same area, that um, belong to the same species, and that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Same area, same species, and interbreed and fertile offspring. There you go. You have to know that. Please learn it. It's easy, easy. In fact, you should remember it by the end of this. Okay, now, other than mutations, give three causes of variation in a population. All right, now, Variation is caused by, and I've told you to learn this before, we got C, M, R, R, R. Those are for your variations, your sources of variation. C is crossing over, and the crossing over during prophase 1. We've just done that. So prophase, can you see that? Prophase 1. That's when we have crossing over. Um, and then the M mutations. And R, R, R are all random. Uh, man, random and random. Okay? The first random is going to be, let me go with yellow, assortment of chromosomes during metaphase one and metaphase two. Remember, when the chromosomes line up at the equator, which is the question we did just before this, all right? During metaphase one, we're going to have chrom the, the chromosomes, whole chromosomes, are going to randomly go to opposite poles, okay? So the maternal chromosome will go this side, 
and, and the paternal that one. And for the next chromo homologous chromosome, maternal will go this side and paternal will go that side. It's random. So there is no regular... It doesn't say that, okay, all paternal chromosomes are only going to go left and all maternal are going... I mean, go right and left. No. Okay? One goes this way, one goes that way. It's completely random. So that's random assortment of chromosomes during metaphase one and two. Then this random here, well, that random is going to be random mating. Which male mates with which female? And I'm writing off the board here. Aye. And then this one here is going to be random. Um, when we have our gametes, we're going to have random fertilization. Remember, when we do our Punnett squares, oy vey, when we do our Punnett squares, you've got your gametes go here, and you've got a, um, a, a gamete for the male and a gamete or female, female, and here you'll have X and you'll have Y. And as those combinations come up, those combinations dictate the four options. This option, let me just get a different color, this option, that option, this one, and that one that can take place during fertilization. You're always going to have one gamete from the mother and one gamete from the father, one from the ovum, one from the sperm cell. Which gamete is carrying what? And on top of which, we've got the variation from crossing over and we've got the variation during the random assortment of the chromosomes during metaphase one and two. All of that is going to give you variation. So remember, we have got crossing over, we've got crossing over, we've got mutations, random assortment of chromosomes, metaphase one and two, random mating, and random fertilization. Which one of those combinations during fertilization is going to cause our little, or create our little organism. Okay, so next question. It says, explain why there were eventually more squirrels with mutations on one side of the river than on the other side of the river. Now you've got to remember, and I'm, I'm not going to write this out, I'm going to explain it. What happens is, your, your squirrels have variation. So we look here. Let me just take all of this off. Okay. Start on a nice, new, clean slate. Okay. Here, there's your population. That's species A. Now, species A has changed from this to this. Okay. The water then splits them. At this point, they are the same. All right, they have variation. So the first thing that you're going to see is that there is variation. Okay, and that variation has been caused and increased by the mutations that have occurred. All right, so there are your mutations. And what's happened is with the mutations, you're going to also have your environmental conditions. So in environmental conditions and those environmental conditions are now going to put pressure I mean pressure on each um, population okay because the envir environmental conditions here and the environmental conditions here are different. So this one is different and this one is different. Okay, and because of that it depends on who is going to survive. Natural selection is determined by survival of the fittest. Do they have the organisms? Do they have what it requires to survive? If they don't, well they die. And if they die, well, they can't reproduce. So if they can't reproduce, well, they're not going to pass those genes for the unfavorable uh, 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 characteristic onto the next generation. 
And in this case, if we look here, it happened with these little guys. You see, that wasn't favorable. So, not favorable. And if they're not favorable, well, those organisms will die because they're not going to survive. Okay, and if they don't survive, well, they're not going to pass those characteristics on to the next generation. But what did work was the characteristics that these little guys had. And those characteristics were good. And because they were good and helped with survival, they are the ones that survived. And how? Well, they survived, they reproduced, and they passed those characteristics to the next generation. And the exact opposite happened on this side of the river with this species here. Why? So this one ends up staying species A. Oh, it's species A. Okay, this species B on this side, because of, of the environmental conditions that are different, these little guys don't make it. And they don't make it, they can't pass their genes on to the next generation, but these little ones do. And they then pass their favorable characteristics to the next generation. It's as simple as that. If something is good and it's going to help them to survive, then they do survive and they pass it on. If it's not good and, they, and it's not going to help them survive, they're dead. And, and it's the most basic idea, the most basic concept, and they're the things that you guys battle with so often. It's, it's a simple matter of survival of the fittest. Okay, now, it says explain the effect of the process above and what it has on the biodiversity. Now remember, biodiversity is the biological diversity. Diversity is the result of change over time. That's all it is. So explain the effects. It leads to different populations and species of animals. That is what causes speciation. Okay, then it was discovered that species A and B were two separate species. And it says, describe what can be done to confirm that the squirrels belong to two different biological species. The easiest, best way to tell you, apart from looking at them, but even looking at them, I mean, they may have a slightly different color coat or a slightly different what, 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 doesn't matter. It's in their genetics will tell you if they're the same species or not. That's a bit difficult and it's expensive because now you have to go and get a whole bunch of squirrels and you've got to send, get DNA samples and you've got to send it off to a lab and hope that they don't mess things up, okay? Or simple, you can take your, your squirrels, you take a whole bunch of squirrels from this side, a whole bunch of squirrels from that side and you put them together. And if they then breed, okay? then you can say, okay, fine, let's check the babies. And if those babies are infertile, they are not the same species. Okay, and very often, they won't even interbreed. Why? Because the courtship rituals and all the different little things that change between two species, that, that the males just don't attract the uh, females. Um, you know, the females aren't interested because they don't like the way they've done this or they've done that because it is species specific. All right, your, your courtship rituals are species specific. Um, you've got a whole bunch of things that can go, that, that can be different. At the end of the day, how do you tell if they are the same species? Do they breed or can they breed, interbreed? And uh, most important, they can interbreed, cool. But can they produce fertile young? Yes, they can. Yay. Then they're the same species. No, they can't. Their uh, uh, offspring are infertile. They are two separate species. Also.